Hello and welcome, Leo. This is going to be a Zodiac specific reading, as you can tell from the title. And what I have done is I have taken some blank note cards, one for each one of the signs, and I wrote on the backs of each one of them one of the Zodiac signs and symbols. And then I took them blindly without looking and meditated on those energies wrote down some impressions and channeled messages on the note card. And then I came to the table, laid them all out again blindly, and started going through a bunch of different decks and laid out some cards on each of those. So you're going to see a bunch of different decks, just a couple of cards from each. I haven't taken a peek at your energies yet. And um, each one of the decks after I finished placing all the cards out, I flipped it over and the underside of each deck is up. And I'm not going to go ahead and do a reading on those specifically, but I've already noticed in the first four signs that have uploaded, there are a lot of synchronicities between the cards that are coming up and the cards that are already faced up. So if it's called out, if something calls its attention, we'll We'll bring it into the reading. So, all right, Leo, <clears throat> got your card here. Let's put you up front and center. Thank you for coming in, lending your time, energy, and attention. Uh, let's see what your channeled messages are. <clears throat> I'll try my best not to interpret these messages. Uh, if you feel inclined, go ahead and try to take a snapshot to decipher my handwriting and you'll have to flip the script because I'm on a flipped screen here. So all right. I was seeing an image on the wall when I was doing your meditation and this brought me to say far away lands and then something about McFarland. I have nothing for that one. The great wall or walls a great divide, politics and values that drive wedges, interference, distance within a partnership, looking through a keyhole, flipping the script. Oh, flipping the script. Interesting. Duality to overcome, <clears throat> reconcile differences, weaponizing, origin story, adventure, worldliness and wordiness, simplification, travel light, lantern, seeker, truth, moving from dissonance to resonance, joy ahead, no longer holding back, surpassing old limits, slash expectations, way shower, trailblazer, like minds, self-belief, fulfillment, life force, and I saw 333, life well lived, and I have underlined well lived. So getting the most out of your time here, perhaps, Let's check in. First, we have the Tao Te Ching reading. We'll have an Art of War card, the Archetype deck, and then a few Oracle cards, a few Tarot cards, and we'll finish you up with the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle deck. Um, <clears throat> so we start out with the Tao number 35. And this says, She who is centered in the Tao can go where she wishes without danger. She perceives the universal harmony, even amid great pain, because she's found peace in her heart. Music or the smell of good cooking may make people stop and enjoy, but words that point to the Tao seem monotonous and without flavor. When you look for it, there's nothing to see. When you listen for it, there's nothing to hear. When you use it, it is inexhaustible. So right off the bat, I'm, I'm sensing she can go where she wishes without danger. 
this is that adventurous spirit perhaps and um it's like when you when you look for it when you listen for it there's nothing to see in here that's that whole wordiness and uh you know you can say a lot with saying nothing at all and those that speak don't know there's all these sayings about you know keeping it simple keeping keeping the words to a bare minimum so I'll do my best because I am a wordy one so also this whole um distance in partnership we had that with with the adventure in here in this origin story it's like maybe you've gone <clears throat> too far away lands from where your origin story took its um had its beginning where your roots have been and you've gone on your your quest and you've seen different dishes you've eaten ethnic foods from faraway lands and you've stopped you've looked and listened and you've taken it all in but in recounting the stories maybe there are some adventures to tell but it's like how can you really explain to somebody the essence of being in one of those different places you know, in a different environment, it comes down to a vibrational resonance or not. So I think that's interesting. I don't know how that'll resonate with you. Let's see what else we have here. So in your art of war, we have be decisive and be quick. Life is short. I said that. Although it's only when you reach a certain age that you realize this. The fact is is that you cannot afford to wait too long to tackle your problems as they will only get worse. Face them now, decide what to do, and act quickly. You may find that things are not as difficult as you thought. Interesting. Even amid great pain, it's like the origin story coming far from that. It's like life is too short to maybe not reach for closure in some type of way or reach for some type of resolution or reconciling differences even when others or self has weaponized some type of relationship or 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 otherwise you'll know your story so facing it is perhaps something that you're being called to do you've probably already been feeling that that little thought and whisper in your ear to get it done over the last however long if this message is coming to you. The other side, Sun Tzu said, though we've heard of stupid haste in war, cleverness has never been associated with long delays. All right, driving it home, spirit. Yeah, we don't want to be too hasty, but it doesn't get easier the longer it lasts, perhaps. The uh, the pain is always there, just below the surface. So, yeah, this may be part of your long-standing, lifelong healing journey that we're talking about. Okay, <clears throat> beautiful. The two archetype cards that you get are the Sustainer, and the maiden i don't know if i can exactly show that or not youtube's kind of finicky she's kind of has her hand on her naked breast it's there so it's talking about the <clears throat> the feminine definitely the feminine blossoming blooming and the trees in the background because of the other cards in this deck, tells me a bit about the card that is known as the Father. So this may have specific importance to you, but somehow your happiness, your blooming, and uh, please don't uh, shoot the messenger, but for some of the viewers, there will be quite a complicated situation between either the father's choice in mates, girlfriends, 
or the father's inappropriate attention, you'll know it and understand what I mean there. So there's something perhaps tied into the, I apologize for the delay. Let me just um, get some assistance with some words here. It's about how we, how we have maintained a sense of our femininity, a sense of our attractiveness. And this doesn't have to be inappropriate. Um, it doesn't have to be molestation. It can be inappropriate as far as like there are mothers and fathers and, and friends and relatives and individuals that will detract from whatever they can pick on like Oh, your, your hair or, oh, that outfit, you look like this or, oh, your work ethic, you this or that, or some type of other type of dynamics where individuals can undermine your sense of identity, your sense of value, purpose, beauty, whatever it might be. The Chiron wound is what I was thinking about earlier, that lifelong wound here. And with Leo's, Leo rules the heart chakra. And it's the urge and the want to be open, expressive, fully creative on every capacity and every level. And to just let that pour through you without judgment, without any type of reservation of will we be loved or will we be judged you know it's that urge to be open but then seeing the human nature all around us and the judgments in nature within ourselves that can sometimes have that double-edged sword that rears its ugly head and we start to hide aspects we start to you know be more of a chameleon and do as is expected instead of being that authentic self and that's one of the ways that leo can begin to um seek for validation and and some type of um, energy from others, like, like, tell me I'm enough, show me that you love me, instead of just being beautiful and radiant and in love with the self. And so that's what I'm seeing here is um, the sustainer, the, the image, the innocence, and the ability to not only persevere, but to to honor your own sacred femininity, whether you're masculine or feminine, because it's it's not gender specific. Uh, the feminine aspects are like our ability to be authentic and expressive and creative and passionate, engaged, inspired and inspiring, and to be met with some type of respect and appreciation and acceptance. And I think that that's a very human need that many people have gotten all misconstrued in in the dynamics that they're playing out. And I'm sure that as Leos, you guys have had your own fair share of people telling you to take a seat, to shine a little less brightly. You know, I don't want to pull out my sunglasses. Could you quit um being successful and talking about it because no one wants to hear about it. You know, that kind of stuff. So with that being said, the next card out here is moderation. So moderation, of course, is a card of balance and timing and subtle restabilizing things like how much me can I be with this person or with that person? How much of my truth can I say here? Because, yeah, we all want to express like crazy, but, you know, you don't want to necessarily um, walk into, let's say, a daycare and play your heavy thrash metal with swears and stuff. It's like that's the extreme example of how others can perceive us when their inner child has its own little <clears throat> bubble of awareness and comfort. And then we come stumbling in with our all of our dynamic essence or fire or whatever, we're turned 
on by in the moment. And it can be a little too much. It can be uh, extreme. It can, the language can pierce and it can actually create physical discomfort in, in those individuals that are taking someone in if they're not at the right level. It's like, what, that's one of the reasons why we socially would avoid talking about politics and religion, you know, because people's values can be so finicky or finicky is the wrong word, um, can be so triggered by new input and information. Most people can't open their minds and have a conversation and share insights and exchange information without having some type of a challenge to their sense of identity. So it looks like you've been able to, oh, yes, 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 that's it. The Leo is also the sign that talks about the inner child and being playful and being loud and proud. It's the child of the Zodiac. And so being able, having the, the maiden and the sustainer is like being able to sustain that inner childlike spark that is so divine that makes you who you are. It is your connection to spirit. So being able to moderate this in your life, you can turn it full blast within yourself and uh, you can know things without speaking them to other individuals. You know, when somebody's like, oh, I just, um, my mate is this, this, and this, but I but I'm staying anyways. And it's like, you know, depending on who this individual is, you know, it's like, do we give them the true advice? You know, you keep going back to toxicity or do we keep that? And sometimes it's like, you have to be the judge. And I feel like that's what you're doing is you're helping people by your reflection and your ability to remain a little bit playful and perhaps ask people about, um, inquire into those instead of giving advice or instead of giving our opinion can we ask them well what do you think you know drawing others out i think these are good things for leos to to play with because leo does want to be like oh well this is um doesn't it, this is very bland i'm looking for what is that say the smell of good cooking and that taste that you can really sink your teeth into that's kind of the energy that you're looking for and other people are like oh i can't really do spicy you know i i need some more vanilla from you leo so there's something here about that being able to be playful and to um <sighs> water down your truth, which is something I don't recommend on a basis, but to be softer and gentler with individuals helps to, it helps them to access the truth behind the words in a less threatening manner. So I think that there's something here about your ability to help and heal and draw people out and to almost inspire them not to lift them out of their turmoil or negativity or darkness or blandness but the to the extent that we are sparkly you can see it in the eyes i can just feel it in my energy that when when i do leo energy it, it sparks those areas of my chart and so everybody has leo in their chart and some of them might be a little less than comfortable with that but you're drawing individuals into their into their playful nature in some type of a way. So it somebody else's MO might be frustration or anger or bitterness or betrayal or loss or fill in the blank, you know, bypassing, whatever. And you're able to help soothe and call that energy out in quite a gentle way here. And I'll say too that we're just at the time of this recording about 30 days out from the Lionsgate portal, which happens every year about August 8th when our sun aligns with the star Sirius. I believe it's Sirius B. Anyways, 
uh, check that out if you're so inclined, if you haven't heard about that. I feel like this is an activation this entire year, but particularly within the 30 days leading up to and maybe two, three weeks or so on afterwards, I feel like you're going to have some opportunity where you're able to communicate something important, whether you're giving a speech or writing something down or um, engaging in a group dynamic. Uh, there's something here with uh, these hummingbirds, too. And if you haven't heard me say, that is one of the things that I associate with my mother and spirit. So I don't know if that calls to you. Uh, hummingbirds are so subtle and otherworldly. They're so hard to perceive because they're high vibrational and tiny. And even though they're tiny, their wings are like so loud what I can hear them and you don't necessarily think about that but there's something about being tiny but mighty so then we oh speaking of tiny and mighty mice here the benefactor grace and generosity so through this situation that you're being called to somehow communicate or moderate or um play liaison be the middle person um maybe a friend. Anyways, we'll get back to that. I'm seeing this benefactor energy as you today, but also that because you are willing and able to be this graceful, generous spirit, because generosity is another key word for Leo as well, that heart space, wide open and radiating. It's like you are, you are really an inspiration to the hearts and minds that you touch. Ooh, and what did we say about reconciled differences? Whoops, I dropped two out of there. Uh, I believe that they go here. Now I'm getting a little peek in there. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so let's keep going here. Wailing tree reconciliations. I often see this as a grandmother, grandfather card. Someone that perhaps has already died um, is in spirit or somebody that is estranged from yourself, but I'm seeing it as family tree and it's like the tree is burning and it almost looks like, um, I'm seeing the fire here and this being like the glow of the fire. It's like you sitting in front of a, a campfire with friends or family and someone else being on the outside not being invited into the warmth, the hearth fire. But yes, there's some, I'll leave that there, wailing tree. Someone's very sad about the distance here. And um, I'm not giving any recommendations. I'm just saying that that looks like someone else, but it can also recognize the pain that you have in having felt the urge, the need to move away from something that was quite painful and ongoing. So three cards from the Akashic Tarot. We have 15, the Muse. Yes, this playful energy of adventurous spirit. It's like being the one who inspires and amuses others. It's like playing with the energies around, playing your music. This lady imagery in the card has that double flute or whatever you call that. And she's playing her song and there's literally petals falling from the sky. So it appears to me that um, this is also perhaps talking about your, um, and I don't mean to upset you, take this as you will, but it's almost like our ability to help and heal and give advice and assist and inspire is almost one of those things that helps us to not look at the pain, if you catch my meaning. And even though we may be playing muse, we may be seeking amusements, diversions, um, there's always the opportunity to have a presenting problem or a presenting issue that we could lend our hand with. But in the in the moments where, where we become idle, there's something coming up, some whisper, that's hard to perceive when you're busy, and maybe that's why you've been busy. Two of scrolls, two worlds. Yeah, the one left behind 
and the one created for yourself now. It's a very dark uh, card. And look at that fire inside. Somebody, this wailing tree, looking at the fire in those quiet moments or at the cards. And um, there's some kind of image on the table, a spinning wheel. It's like old school uh, um, homestead type thing, a whole community outdoors. I'm actually seeing Buddhist prayer flags or whatever you call those, or those little triangle ones that they um, have on a string that might be hung up um, at a construction site for overhead clearance or like at a used car dealership lot to call attention. Some kind of banner, swags, um, something like that. So maybe it's like somebody is having a celebration here and somebody's not invited or will they be invited? But it, it looks like this is I'm seeing this as some type of a past life where there was an estrangement, perhaps even between uh, somebody going to war and somebody waiting for the return of somebody else or, or something else. It could even be like somebody going, not even to war, but uh, anyways, let's stick with the plot here. You'll know your story, but Two Worlds reminds me of what was and that you had to cut that off or felt you had to cut that off. And now you've you've created your own thing. And then five of scrolls, diversity. Yeah, going out and becoming worldly, looking at all these books and scrolls and knowledge, research, gathering the knowledge and leaving perhaps a small town or a small minded <clears throat> essence behind you and yeah, you've um, you've become quite worldly. You have a lot of of insight under your under your belt. So two cards from the next deck. We've got King of Feathers, which is your card here. Logic and Justice. Look at that lovely Leo, radiant aura, crown, enlightened. It's like the enlightenment of the crown is because of all of these scrolls. You have the two and the five partnership and change changing partnership also the numbers 15 and 59 and 8 and 24 logic and justice yeah it's like justice has been served you've gone out you've lived your best life and you are living proof of everything and check out the the aura crown in this card as well it's like your wisdom is even otherworldly. You've done a lot of esoteric deep diving as well, I can tell. Six of crystals, synergy and gratitude. Look at those cute little, what are they, prairie dogs? Like the Timon from Lion King, I always think, because we've got the, the lion king, and we've got these little meerkats. That's what they are. <clears throat> synergy and gratitude. I think that you've learned how to work well with others, with the assets that you have, with the information that's come to you. And um, yes, oh, I'm just noticing too, the crown on that guy. It's like King Me and Checkers. You've really accomplished a lot, but even this, and I keep hearing prodigal son, prodigal daughter, whatever. It's some kind of story. You probably know it better than myself, where the child sees themselves needing to leave home to go and gather all of this wisdom and success, but then ultimately their heart or whatever calls them back home. So I don't know if you're also like somebody's perhaps even calling you back. Somebody's not doing as well as they could be. Um, being of two minds and something, uh, wondering if if there's anything left for you back home type of a thing. But, and I feel like I'm kind of butchering this, but I hope that this message has some meaning for yourself. I feel like you're, wherever you have led yourself, you have gathered the information to be able to work well with any energy that presents. And your grateful heart is bringing you so many blessings at this time. You really help 
keep people together. You keep situations together. You know how to problem solve. You're probably somebody that people go to for advice and to feel held and loved and hugged and warm. Um, we've got four cards here for you from the Celtic Dragon. Some people got the... Um, the cat people, you got Celtic dragon. This is year of the dragon, if I didn't say. And we've got the emperor, six of pentacles, king of cups, and six of cups. Interesting. I'll show these to you. So the emperor, again, with all these king me essences, it's like you with the king, the crown, and all of the children and the children with their happiness and joy and their toys and being able to oversee your life. And then we have this beggar essence, that old grandfatherly essence from Wailing Tree here, wanting you to be generous with them and you hold all the coins now. And then this King of Cups, I'm seeing as you, your heart expansion, another crown coming forward with your emotional nature and your warm nature. And then the Six of Cups, something about a return, a reconciliation with past energies. Back on task, number 39. Be sure you're using your time in the best possible manner. You might consider reviewing your goals, schedule, or a project you're working on. All could use some fine tuning. So I do believe that we're talking about that back on task is like stopping the distractions and having reached a conclusion, having researched or done whatever you needed to do, you're ready somehow to work with some type of healing energy, healing of relationships, perhaps, or at least getting along for the sake of some type of objective here. So keep that childlike spark in your pocket here and do your best to have that slow release of energy so you don't overwhelm others or get overwhelmed by situations. I feel like this is just another chapter and that you have it well in hand. So take care of yourself and uh, do consider hitting some of those buttons if you're inspired to help us get the message out. And until next time, take care.